In the name of research, researchers pressed the limits of what was acceptable. Even now, some of these breaking cases would raise a few eyebrows. These experiments have been vital to understanding what makes people tick, and researchers' findings have increased our collective knowledge on human behaviors and human ideas. Questionable ethics aside, some astounding results have been made over the past couple of years. From getting a better grasp on human behavior to experiments in mental health and medication to one on this list that will push you to what you may think is acceptable in the name of knowledge, these experiments will challenge what you think about research. Watch through to the end, and you'll be surprised at just how much we've learned through some of the under-the-counter measures. So get out your notepads, pens, and typewriters, subscribe to the channel, and get ready to learn about six psychological experiments that will blow your mind. Number six, Harlow's Monkeys. Harry Harlow's work with primates is considered a classic in behavioral science, revolutionizing how we understand the role of social relationships in early development. Harlow concluded that the idea that a caring parental figure is needed for development, and not simply because of food provision, but instead of saying that this perspective overlooked the importance of comfort, companionship, and love for healthy growth. Using isolation and paternal deprivation methods, Harlow showed the impact of contact comfort in primate development by separating the infants with their mothers and providing sustenance from an unfriendly, uncomfortable surrogate. The researchers offered a soft material surrogate, and one that was unfit and made with wire and wool. Experiments had shown that despite giving the wire quote-unquote mother a bottle, the monkey sought comfort from the soft mom without food. The study, in all, provided groundbreaking empirical evidence for the parent-child attachment relationship and the importance of comforting touch to an infant whenever they are faced with new and scary situations. Even more than 70 years later, this study continues to inform the scientific understanding of how exactly human behavior and its building blocks are formed. Number 5. The Milgram Experiment Yale University psychology professor Stanley Milgram embarked on an infamous series of experiments in 1961. The high-ranking Nazi and Holocaust coordinator Adolf Eichmann had prompted Milgram's desire to access whether people could carry out acts, no matter what they were, if instructed by an authority figure. Three people were lined up for each test, split into experimenter, teacher, and learner. The experimenter was the authority figure, and the learner was an actor. The teacher was then told to comply with the authority figure and attempt to tutor the learner in word pairs. The wrong answer would end up earning the learner a jolt, increasing in pain and intensity over time, though no actual shocks were inflicted. That's where the actor came in. The teacher understood that they were hurting their subjects, and the process came into question whether the psychological stress of being put on the volunteer subjects was acceptable or pushing some ethical lines. It's easy to say that you'd know where to stop and where the line lies, but this experiment proved just how willing people were to follow instructions. Number 4. The Little Albert Experiment In 1920, things were different, though it was just over a hundred years ago. You could take a healthy baby back then and scare it silly in the name of science, and nobody would bat an eye. That's precisely what psychologist John B. Watson did at Johns Hopkins University. What he wanted to do is to be able to see if he could contain a child to fear something ordinary by coupling it with something else that triggered the fear. He borrowed eight-month-old baby Albert for an experiment with seemingly questionable ethics. First, the child was introduced to a white rat, which was observed not to scare Albert. He then reintroduced the rat along with a sudden loud noise. Naturally, the noise frightened Albert and over time the child was made to associate the rat with the noise, getting him to the point that he couldn't see the rat without crying. Essentially, Watson had learned that phobias could be conditioned into children, further making Albert fear rabbits, dogs, and even the furry white beard of Santa Claus. By the end of the experiment, 
with no work done to reintroduce and uncondition the fear, he may as well have traumatized little Albert for life. Number 3. The UCLA Schizophrenia Medication Experiment Schizophrenia, much like the rest of mental health, is still being studied and isn't fully understood. In 1983, psychologist Keith Neuterling and psychiatrist Michael Gitlin from the UCLA Medical Center had conducted a study that is now seen as somewhat controversial. They wanted to understand better how those who suffer from the mental disorder relapse and any predictors for psychosis. A group of hundreds was picked at random and taken off their medications unceremoniously, something dangerous or even uncertain. The study did end up coming under fire as they were seen as not sufficiently protecting their patients in the event of a schizophrenic symptom returning, and nor did they determine the point at which they should be treated again. The study ultimately had tragic consequences when a patient who had been open about his mental state and suicidal thoughts jumped off a nine-story rooftop while supposedly under the study's watch. Whether they gained more information from the trouble that they caused is not sure. We may understand more about the condition, but there's still so much we don't know. There are a lot of studies out there explaining almost every phenomena, from large to small. Even though more ethically can't be done, whether they require unethical means or more work than it's worth, there is still so much about the human body that still has yet to be explored. Which begs the question, what is one experiment that you think could benefit society more? That is, if we were to just relax the rules a little bit. Let us know down in the comments section below, as we would love to hear your thoughts. Number 2. The Monster Study Now, the first red flag for this study should have been the secrecy that Dr. Wendell Johnson had surrounded his speech therapy in, just in case it damaged his professional reputation. The University of Iowa's Johnson had drafted grad student Mary Tudor to experiment while Johnson supervised. There were 22 orphan children, 10 with speech impediments and the rest not, who were split into two groups mixing the group. One group was given positive, encouraging feedback, and the other was utterly disparaged for their sometimes non-existent speech problems. After the six-month study concluded, significant impacts had shown that even those without speech problems before were insecure and withdrawn after the treatment. In 2007, half a dozen former students were given a payout for the quote, lifelong psychological and emotional scars which the study had left. Lastly, number one, the Stanford Prison Experiment. Finally, the most outrageous and quite possibly the most infamous study that was ever carried out, the Stanford Prison Experiment. Any psych class will cover it at some point, and it's one of the most notorious and controversial experiments ever conducted. In August of 1971, Stanford University psychology professor Philip Zimbardo had decided to test some theories which were being held about conflict and ill-treatment of prisoners by guards, saying that it all came down to individuals' personality traits. Zimbardo had set up his team with a simulated prison and assigned roles to volunteers with him either being the role of a prisoner or a guard. They were dressed according to the roles, and Zimbardo himself stood as a supervisor. He steered the volunteer guards to create a sense of powerlessness among the mock prisoners, and the results were astounding. About four dozen of these fake guards, who held no power over the other volunteers before, became sadistic. Prisoners were stripped, humiliated, and left in unsanitary conditions or were forced to even sleep on concrete floors. Even Zimbardo was immersed in his role so profoundly that he overlooked the increasing severity, only stopping when his girlfriend persuaded him, but not before several prisoners suffered emotional trauma. People are consistently pushing the limits of what is and what isn't okay in the name of research and knowledge. These experiments blow our minds now as they'd never be approved today, or even if they were controversial, even back then. We understand the mind a little bit better these days, but at what cost? What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below, and if you liked the video and you want to see more insane psychological facts, leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel with post notifications turned on. The mind is a crazy, disturbing, and wild thing. 
You never know what the next study will bring.